Hello, my name is Marie France. I'm here on behalf of Canary, and I'm speaking with Dr. Alan Evans. What does C-Brain and G-Brain stand for, and what are they? C-Brain is integrating the brain imaging research centers across the country with the supercomputers across the country, the high-performance grid across the country. And that's what brings this massive computational capability to our brain researchers. What's the main difference between the two programs? C-Brain is, in, is internal, and G-Brain is international. What is involved in the research, and do you have any partners? We have uh, five partners across the country as brain imaging research centers in Toronto, uh, Hamilton, uh, London, British Columbia, and uh, Montreal, of course. Why is this kind of research possible today? It's really brain mapping is what we do, and this brings together uh, brain imaging technology, MRI scanners, PET scanners, with uh, high performance computing. And that high performance computing wasn't available to us uh, except in the last few years with, uh, with uh, the introduction of canary technology into the brain mapping community. Does this replace working with an actual brain? In, yes, in some ways it does. The, the Brain Imaging Center at uh, McGill University was founded by Wilder Penfield, and he did his work by stimulating the exposed cortex of the human brain to find out how the brain works and what parts of the brain are responsible for what activity. We now do that with supposedly normal McGill students and, and uh, investigate brain function using MRI scanners. And we do this in thousands of subjects. So you have lots of mathematical, statistical, computational problems of analyzing all of that data. What is some of the research that's currently being conducted and has there been any breakthrough? Well, there are two big areas that, that we're involved in. One is uh, development. We're looking at uh, the, the developing brain in, ch in 500 children from birth to aged 18. So we're looking at how their brain grows and how it relates to their performance on various psychological and, and uh, learning behavioral tasks. So that's one end, and uh, you see this glorious growth of, of, the, of the brain's uh, white matter fiber pathways through the brain from birth to 12 months of age. And this is when your child goes from being a little sensory processing engine into, into a real human being that uh, understands the world around them. And we see that developing inside the, the brain. At the other end, we're looking at uh, neurodegenerative diseases, particularly Alzheimer's disease, and it's the same story. We want to understand the basic mechanisms of the disease process itself so that we can bring a cure uh, to Alzheimer's disease that much sooner. What are some of the things that can be done with, this, uh, re with these research networks that couldn't be done until now? Really, it's, it's big science. We, we, you can get more and more and more subjects involved. You can look at more and more subtle aspects of the brain disorder or the brain function. And you really can't do that in any one site. You need to bring together multiple sites. And we are able to do that within C-Brain and G-Brain. What are the next steps? The next steps, I think, are to really deploy this capability to not just the five big centers that I've mentioned, but many other centers across Canada. That's on the interna in, in the internal scene. We're also building bridges to our partners in Europe, um, the Far East, and in the U.S. to build a global brain mapping grid. Finally, what does this mean for the health of Canadians? It could mean a, a tremendous amount because we are all facing um, uh, the aging of the Canadian population and Alzheimer's disease is going to be an increasing problem to Canadian health management services. If we can get a better handle on the basic mechanisms of Alzheimer's disease now, we will save ourselves as a country an awful lot of money in the future. The point that, that if you want to say anything about this as an over comment is this is, this is a web view, it's, it's through the web. This is not one of our programs in, in the lab. Uh, any, of our, any of our partners around the world can drive this and analyze their data using this, this tool. And so this might be, for instance, that part of the brain that is activated when you're doing language processing. And so we're looking at this, and this is data from hundreds of subjects. It's not a single result. It's mapped together. So this is not like radiology where you're, you're looking to see if there's something wrong in this particular brain, and then you go to surgery. This is understanding how the brain generally works across the population. Who, who inputs into this, basically? 
Well, um, there's, there's a number of ways to use this. Uh, we can use this to look at um, our database that we've built locally. There are millions of uh, data sets in here uh, that anybody around the world can explore. That's one use. The second use is that uh, brain view online, right? That means if uh, somebody in China wants to use this, this environment to process their own data, they can submit their own imaging data and explore it using this same tool. Yeah, it, it's, that's the beauty of it. It's, it's a real, obviously interactive, real-time, live web viewer of their own data. And this is in part because we're all operating in what we call the same shoebox, the same 3D coordinate space. It doesn't matter where your experiments are being, being done. You point to some point on the brain by its X, Y, Z coordinates. Sounds a little bit nerdy, but what that uh, means is that you can stick thousands of brains in that same shoebox, and at any location, I have a thousand normal subjects and a thousand Alzheimer's subjects, and I can do a statistical analysis at that location of the structure and function of the human brain at that point. So it's not anecdotal. Well, I saw this in one subject. It's it's, it's, it's computational, mathematical approaches to brain science.